We have Health Officer Kristen Pluta and Community Health Education and Promotions Coordinator Allison Spencer. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, nice to see you both. Thanks for coming in today. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. Yeah, did you guys have a nice uh, Labor Day holiday weekend? Yeah, a little too quick. Yeah. It always goes too quick. Now, you have a college kid, right? I do. Yeah. I have a Navy kid who's having a baby. Oh, my gosh. In Japan. Mm -hmm. Wow. I have my first grandbaby in Japan and then a daughter in college in Tennessee. Are you going to be able to go to Japan? We're hoping to try to go in like February. Baby's due in end when, of December, early January. So when's the baby due? January, late January 4th. Oh, you should take the winter. <laughs> I, I, you know, I talked to my boss uh, about, you know, working remote. You from should Japan. be able to. I think, you know, I think technology so. day yeah. these days. It's very yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. Support the Navy. Yeah. yeah. Allison, how about you? Did you have a nice holiday? I did. Just, yeah, yeah super fast. But it was good. Yeah, it flew by. I think it's the summer. Goes, yeah. it all, for all of us, it flew by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, now we're back at it. Kids are back in school. And I know one of uh, the areas you focus on is our, the, the health of our kids. And you've got, um, you're, you're concerned about teen cannabis use. Yes, we are. Although, um, you know, we're seeing a little bit of a decrease in, in the students who report use. Um, it is still... It is still a problem. It is still uh, an area kids are using. They have been, you know, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we, kids have been using, you know, cannabis since forever. But we want to talk about it and have parents talk about it with their kids. And, you know, as it becomes more and more available, mm -hmm. the time is more. I think one of the concerns I know uh, from my hear parents is you don't know, how do you know if your kids, because uh, if they're vaping or if they're using uh, the edibles, the mm -hmm. gummies, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, they're uh, into the beer. You can smell it and witness right. it, but is it harder for? I think, I mean, for sure. And so this will be a great opportunity for parents or caregivers, grandparents to be able to come to this um, seminar on Thursday night. We've got two great experts um, that can really help parents to understand like the different forms of marijuana and really kind of what specifically to look for, um, you know, with their, their kiddos and how they can kind of recognize if they are using any of these products. Uh, today, Cranes Detroit is reporting that uh, marijuana pricing in Michigan in July is at an all-time low, and one of the reasons is because there's still a market, there's illegal uh, marijuana still on the market that's mm -hmm. widely available and that's driving down mm -hmm. the uh, legal marijuana pricing. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, but, you know, what we're really looking forward to is, um, Allison mentioned the two speakers. We have um, Dr. Colin King mm -hmm. and Stephanie Hewn. And if you look at our flyer, she's got lots of little abbreviations after mm -hmm. her name um, showing how qualified she is. We've had them, you know, in our program or in our county do a couple other presentations and they're really knowledgeable. Dr. King, um, you know, I, I anticipate his presentation will be a lot on, um, you know, how that affects teens' brains. Mm -hmm. He's very into um, and educated on, like, the brain function. Mm -hmm. So, you know, helping parents you know, understand what to look for and, you know, and how that affects so they can talk to the kids. But this this has, can have permanent impact on your growing brain that mm -hmm. is not fully developed. And if they're, you know, getting kind of down to the root of why kids are, you know, obviously there's the peer pressure, but if there's other kind of an interesting thing we noticed with some of the data, it obviously showed like in 1920, the increased use of marijuana use among teens, and that's understandable with COVID. Um, but now seeing that it has decreased, which is good, but, you know, if parents can recognize how to help their kids find other ways to sometimes deal with pressures or some coping mechanisms that they might be and because uh, the teen's brain is still developing, is it more is is it more of a concern then? You know, I don't want to speak. I'm not the expert in that for sure. But you know that we do know that teens' right. brains are not developed. So using any kind of substance, we want to keep them away from that. Um, I'm sure Dr. King will have much more. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like yeah. age 25. So even like a lot of outside of being a teenager, yeah. <laughs> your brains aren't still fully you know, that frontal cortex. So it's good to probably avoid. Yeah, I felt my brain stopped developing <laughs> a few years ago. Uh, so you've got this chart, which I guess it's encouraging mm -hmm. in that uh, we're seeing use go down, mm -hmm. which to me is, su is surprising because it's become more available. Right. 
Yeah, that's good. And this is like it, this is actually specific to Jan Jackson County. This information it's um, data from the Michigan Profile for Healthy Youth. Um, and so it's ninth and 11th graders that participate in this survey. Um, we don't have specific schools in Jackson County, but it's just kind of a general idea. So that is good to see that it has decreased even just from you know the last time the survey was. And these kids, they're reporting. This is from yes, talking this is, to yep. the kids. Report. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's, and do you know how they're consuming uh, marijuana? I don't think that piece. Doesn't yeah, matter, probably, does it? it doesn't, yeah, yeah, just that they've tried it or that they've tried it within the past 30 days is that information in the yellow. So yeah. they are using it, so. <laughs> so this uh, forum, let's talk about it. Um, who should come? Is it is it for parents? To, do you want teenagers to be part of it? Is I it? think anybody who wants. It can be parents, grandparents, um, anybody who's a caregiver, anybody who just wants to have more information in their back pocket so that they can be more knowledgeable. Is the conversation different in a household where the parents might also be consumers of marijuana? Probably. probably. It's kind of, you know, I, I kind of attribute that to what I would think now is kind of like the drinking age, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can drink at certain age that doesn't just because I as a parent drink at a certain age doesn't make it okay for you. Right. Um, and you know, just yeah, and we even with our program at the health department, we also, you know, provide lock bags to parents because if they are using products, we want to make sure that they're being safe and keep, keeping them out of the hands of of children. So we do promote, you know, that safety piece mm -hmm. as well because we know parents are still going to uh, one of the controversies there is claims that it's not addictive and there are those that say it, it is. Are there techniques and do you have tools at the health department to help somebody uh, back off usage of marijuana? That's where we would partner with some of our um, mm -hmm. other agencies and resources that are in the community like Drug Free Jackson, Henry Ford, Home of New mm -hmm. Vision, some of those other programs that are out there. We don't specifically have any tobacco cessation or any kind of like marijuana mm -hmm. drug cessation programs, but there are them in the area and we would, you know, definitely connect to Absolutely. some of those partner resources. Oh, particularly uh, marijuana that's smoked, it's going to cause damage to the lungs just yeah. like yes. cigarettes would. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's still the same mm -hmm. in, in terms of lung damage. It's still the same. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we'd be great at connecting to whatever people need if we can't, you know, give them the resources ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this isn't um, applying to you because you're both a lot younger than me, but <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, in college, a, l a lot of people uh, used marijuana, but the strength, the, the potency, it was like nothing mm -hmm. compared to what, what it is today. That, and I know that they're finding a lot of other, you know, especially the non, um, when you're not getting it from a, 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 a legal source, mm -hmm. when you're getting it from an illegal source, I know that they have had... Um, a lot of things that it's it's laced with other things you don't know you know it's it's very similar mm -hmm. to the opioid epidemic when you don't really know what you're getting and what all that is in is in there mm -hmm. yeah in that cranes article today they talked about one marijuana retailer that brought in thc in liquid form from oregon to juice up their marijuana hmm. and it had uh, a trunk concentration that was 97 times how it would occur what? naturally. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Yeah, that's yeah. a little potent. And, and you know, we see, you know, these, we've tried to do some campaign ads and billboards around the county with our marijuana funding to, you know, for that safe storage mm -hmm. that Allison mentioned. But, you know, these, it, it, marijuana is coming in forms that look like candy. They look like gummy bears, you know. Mm -hmm. you, know you joke about taking a gummy or whatever, but, you know, these kids don't know what they're getting. You. you find a gummy or something like that and you, you don't know what strength that is mm -hmm. or you know how strong take that whole no, thing for and sure the knows. kids that are yeah at the ground level they see anything on the floor it's going to go into their mouth so it's it's scary to think if yeah yeah and we've heard stories you know college parties there'll be a dish mm -hmm. uh, of the candies gummies or whatever and you don't know right the um fear that um i think parents have is that kids little kids you know Toddlers can get their hands on something that looks like it looks oh, like for a gummy sure. bear. It's a gummy, gummy bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The marketing. Are you concerned about how these products are marketed? In, in particular, you can see like a store that's named Cookies. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I know people have said, oh, that's a cookie store, uh, not realizing. <laughs> I thought it was. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be a store like Crumble or something. Yeah, like yeah. I thought, Where you yeah. go get the cookies when it first came up. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, and there is some public health. We are not specifically involved in anything, but there is, there is a, a role in public health um, that I anticipate coming, and I've heard some things on that, you know, that not only that kind of marketing, the cookies and the thing for marijuana, but, you know, the vaping and the, the flavors of the vaping that are like fruit roll-ups mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things that are marketing and, 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 and geared towards trying to get kids to use that. Is there a connection uh, between marijuana smoking and, and cigarette smoking in the teen uh, demographic? You know, that's a good question. I haven't specifically I seen anything that we could answer for sure, but that would be interesting to definitely mm -hmm. learn more about, yeah. Maybe I have to take that back to Allison. We've Kowalski. got that epidemiologist <laughs> back well, at the health department. <laughs> the, the attitude might be, well, if I, you know, I'm smoking this, might as well. What about gateway? Uh, gateway is marijuana. Does is there evidence that it's? You know that is a, a a question that I think hasn't been answered. I, it's a hard question to answer. Mm -hmm. I I don't. You know I would like to say, just in a personal opinion, I I feel like that does lead to some other things. It opens your inhibitions. You know you think I'm okay doing this, um, but that's you know for more of a personal, not not that professional. I don't think mm -hmm. we have a. a a definitive answer on that. Right, and I think just, yeah, like drinking, I mean, using marijuana, it does, it creates, you know, you make different decisions that you normally wouldn't, and um, yeah. All right, back to school now. Uh, mm -hmm. We hope that everyone's got their uh, vaccinations, their uh, health checkups, everything that they need, and you're still at the health department, you still offer all these services. Yes, we are open. Um, we had some lengthened clinic hours. Those are, we're back to our regular clinic hours. Um, for uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 to 4.30, um, or 4 o'clock, I'm sorry, 8 to 4 o'clock, and um, walk in for you know immunizations. We still have um, our health educator doing immunization waivers for any child who needs waivers. You know, we want to educate parents on, you know, why you might not want a waiver and why mm -hmm. we'd want to encourage immunizations because we've seen, you know, I think you just put out a press release for us and talked to some of our staff about pertussis mm -hmm. last week and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so this stuff is happening, but yep, we're open back to regular. We just want to encourage, you know, we wanted to come on here today to talk about this. Let's talk about it. We have openings, food is available, there's gift oh, card yeah. giveaway, or not food is available, food will be provided. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you come for, you know, some dinner. Um, and snacks and, and put your name in the hat for a gift card giveaway. Um, yeah, and I'd say bring spaces. teens if you asked of teens. I'd say if parents yeah. want their teens to come, I think that's great. Um, yeah. And come hear about it. These, you know, uh -huh. like I mentioned, these they're really good speakers that have a lot. Yeah, they're phenomenal. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of knowledge and. All right. Well, uh, scan that code uh, because you want people to register because yes. space is limited. Yep, we want to. We want register because space is limited, and so we can make sure we have enough food. No one wants to not right have enough food. Right at the Jackson County Health Department, up on our second floor, and yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, you guys doing this for our uh, community's parents, and thanks for coming in today. Thank you thanks for, for having, having us. us. You bet. And uh, good luck getting that uh, three-month pass to Japan. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, you know, it's got yeah. Mike Overton and Steve Shotwell. I'll know. mention if yeah. they get a chance. Okay. Uh, she can do it. <laughs> uh, Jackson County Health Department Health Officer Kristen Pluta and Community Health Education and Promotions Coordinator Allison Spencer.